How you doing, boss? I can't call it. I can't call it. So you 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 ready? You can you you can talk now. Or what's what's your situation? I mean, I always can talk. Uh, you know, I'm, that's what I do all day, every day. Um, <laughs> so I, I've I've learned to multitask. Um, you know. Yeah, we all um, we, we all got we we all got that ability. Not everybody. Uh, honestly, but. we not. I, I was about to say that because a lot of people want this smoke, man. A lot of people want this smoke, but they really don't have what it takes, man, to smoke this smoke. You know what I mean? <laughs> and it, that's what it's all about, man. All right, and, you know, I want right. to reach out with you. I want to reach out to you because I've been watching your channel, well, man. Oh, and I, oh, I just, hold on, let me let me let me go in and uh, let me go in and start this. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Breaking Truckers. We've learned our languages through the World Wide Web. Cooking in the Hammer Lane in the building. <laughs> All right, bro. Uh, so you did uh, reached out to me. Uh, All things ego. Um, so let me, before I start this off and let everybody know, disclaimer, this is his experience with the company, which doesn't have nothing to do with the host or the, or the recruiter call channel. All right. So of course you did reach out to me. Uh, you had a, you had a few things to, to say about controversial company Super Eagle. So uh, what, what would you like to say about it, bro? Go ahead. No more wasting time. Let's get it. Hold on. First off, uh, I've been here about two years, uh, a little bit over two years. And um, before doing so, I was a company driver. And uh, I was looking for opportunity to go from being a company driver to an owner-operator. So uh, my first um, endeavor was uh, PLI. And, um, I did that about three or four months. And, you know, although I liked the environment, I mean, they were very welcoming and everything, the money, just the numbers just wasn't there. Uh, and I understood that in order to be a true owner operator from lease purchasing, you can't just get by, you know, within the period that you're leasing the truck, you gotta be sustainable because at the end of the lease, you might got to get an overhaul and things like that. So there's, Seventeen hundred, fourteen hundred. I was getting from PLI. wasn't good, but although they had a great working environment, so I did my due diligence and um, you know I searched companies and I ran a call to Super Ego. And at the time, you know Super Ego didn't have all this you know public uh, relations issues, you know, and things like that because pretty much people wasn't blogging about them. And and I just did my due diligence. They had about a three or four bad reviews, and I was like, okay, okay. But let me see what they're talking about. So I call them up, see what they're talking about. Hey, you know, they want me to come to Chicago, um, you know, Illinois, and, and, and they had to pay for all my expenses. And I, at first I was, I was pulled back by that because I was like, every other company wants me, you know, it's going to pay for me to do it. So I said, okay, well, do I really want to do this? So um, I said, okay, I made my mind up and I went up there and it, I just, I haven't looked back since. Um, I went from making $50,000 a year. My first year, I brought home, after expenses, about 148000 And that's only working 42 weeks out of the year. And this, and, and, and this, me, is, what, and this is what Super Eagle? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so, uh, it's, and, and to so, me, so it's, it's, it's safe to say that you are winning with Super Eagle. Yes, I'm winning, but you got to understand in business, sometimes you lose. I mean, when you deal with business and, and especially the stock market and the validity, the uh, validity of the stock market, I mean, the rates go up and down. So you have to be able to adjust. And that's why they tell you in business that, you know, you got to put away for a rainy day because sometimes it's not always going to be sunny. And right now, uh, the last seven months since March has been very challenging for me. Uh, but I've, I learned to adjust. It's all about adjusting and understanding the market. And, and, and that's why I started my YouTube channel, because at first I did it. I was doing I started cooking in my truck and I did one channel. I did one uh, video about Super ego. And I was like, wait a minute. I got a lot of traction. Right. So I said, let me let me, you know, so elaborate more on this 
and 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 I was I, I did more videos and I was trying to let people see my experience because I was winning. To me, I was winning, man. You know, a hundred for me to go from sixty thousand to one hundred and forty thousand, all they work forty two weeks. I mean, I, to me, that's winning. So I wanted to share my experience with people. And what I realized after months of doing so, um, it was a, a, a very alarming failure rate, right? So what I did, I was like, okay, why are people failing? Because a lot of people call me and I talk to people and I try to counsel people. And a lot of people fail because really they're unaware of the task at hand. They don't understand the contract structure. They don't understand actually how the industry works because you know, you just got to know what's going on, man. And, and, and a lot of drivers, they'll have 10 to 15 years experience, but they really don't have true owner-operator knowledge that would help them uh, be successful here. Let, let me come in right quick. Um, and I agree with you that a lot of, a, a lot of lease, uh, leases fail amongst truck drivers is because I, I don't know uh, – this is just my opinion, but they're coming in yeah. with they're they're coming in with a company with a with a company driver mentality. Would would you agree with that? I uh, highly agree with that. Highly, um, a lot of people, and then you know, Super Eagle gets a lot of bad flack. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of Super saying this Super ego is scamming and they're stealing, but a lot of people don't understand the contract structure, and I. And, and, and what's so bad about it, a year ago, about approximately a year ago, I actually posted the clause from the contract that actually explained to how the pay scale is, 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 is done. In the contract, it says that you get, they take 12% of the load off. And that's really how a lot of people know about this because I put it on my channel. And to give you a little background about me, I just started a course try to be a freight broker to understand the whole industry as a whole, right? Because I really want to know, in my craft, I want to know what's going on. I want to know. I just want to guess and just point fingers at people. And if I don't have an educated, you know, uh, not, you know, uh, uh, opinion, right? So what happens is we are hired as leasees or slash contractors, right? And Super Ego is the carrier, right? Now, a lot of people have a misconception that we are obligated to see the rate con in which, in which there is no law that says uh, that we have to see a rate con. Now, on, on, on the, the rate cons, the only three parties that are obligated to see the rate con are, number one, the, the shipper, the broker, and the carrier, right? Our agreement is not between the broker and us. It's not between the shipper and us. It's between the carrier and us. And that's where our pay scale uh, 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 gets assessed, right? So how you how, how you capitalize off that is through your negotiation skills. Now, I never worried about, from day one, I never worried about how much uh, the carrier gets from the broker because that's not my concern. My concern is to make sure that my truck and my business is is profitable, and and, and 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 to learn all the necessary tools and education I need to make sure that it happens, and that has worked for me for the past two years, man. I, now, I like Super Eagle because I go home when I want to, I do what I want to, and it's like they don't micromanage. And if you have to be micromanaged, this is the, you know this is it, it's going to be a real uh you know hard situation. Now you mentioned about you know about the Raycon, and I I, I do agree uh, agree with you to the point of the agreement uh, is between you and the company you you drive for, i.e., controversial company Super Eagle. My God, that is the best coffee I've ever tasted. You, but when you got when you got these drivers out here that's talking about 
uh, seeing the Raycon and they see that they're getting, uh, in their words, raped. What do you what do you say about that? Because you got some drivers out here that's claiming that, you know, not only that Super Eagle is taking their twelve percent, but they also taking money off the off, off the top of of the rate that they agree with the uh, with the broker or whoever they whoever they get the contract with for the shipment. Okay, so I'm answering I'm answering part number one is. You agree to uh, be contracted to move freight at a rate that is set by the carrier, right? Uh, and the carrier sets the rate. The carrier sets the rates in which they give to the contractor, right? What they do from point A to point B is not under your concern. And the only way it's your concern is this your authority and you in control of that. This is you're not under your own authority. You are a contractor who is contracted to work under someone else's. So therefore, they can set the price. It's it's no different from when a company go to a big mega carrier, right? And say for instance, instead of you on a percentage base, you're on a mile base, right? You can pay by the mile. Do you know most major carriers pay their per mile lease purchase bottom rate, maybe dollar fifteen, dollar twenty, and then they give them the fuel surcharge. This is going to be a hundred percent of the fuel surcharge, about a six percent, right? So that's top out at a dollar eighty, a dollar ninety a mile. I have seen rates as high as five to six dollars a mile, depending on how long, how far was the transit, and things like that. But why would I limit myself, knowing that a mega carrier is getting premium contract rates, which can be three to four to five dollars a mile, and I would limit myself to just a dollar eighty a mile? But a lot of people don't see that because. That concept is easier. You know, what you see is what you get. You don't have to negotiate. You don't have to actually work. You know what I mean? To, to, to understand. You don't have to study the industry. You don't have to focus on the, valid, you know, the valid, validity of the industry and things like that. But, uh, and, and the second part of that question, when I first started this company, right, two years ago, it was me and a friend. We started, man. It was a guy. I met him up there in Chicago. And he was a very, very ambitious guy, man. And we both started. When we started, I think fuel was like two thirty a gallon, and the race was pretty much between two and two fifty. You get two and two fifty on on uh, runs about eight hundred, seven hundred plus. So we was running, man. We get money. We broke about nine, ten thousand. So one time I got a um, a load, and the load paid me two fifty, right? Two fifty a mile, right? So while me and him was running two dollars a mile, uh, I was like, hey, man. I think I'm going to start doing this, man. Why would I run $2 a mile and put up four miles and make less money? Why don't I focus on this on this model where I try to get more money for less amount of miles? And I focus on, on that model. And I found myself doing less miles and being a lot more profitable. And he kept doing what he was doing. To him, it worked for him. You know, it worked for him. Um, so the thing is, the reason why people feel that they are being raped because they're unaware and un and I want I don't want to say uneducated because they're they're they don't understand what's actually going on and how it actually works. You're not okay, so I'm just give a brief analogy this way to the left field. Say for instance you go to Walmart and you pay five dollars for a loaf of bread. You find out that Walmart got that loaf of bread for one dollar from China. You go then when you find out you will go back to Walmart and get mad and say no. Y'all paid a dollar for this bread. I want this bread for a dollar fifty. I've been scammed. No, that is the cost of doing business. That is how businesses are ran. Everybody just has different types of models. If you look at um, U.S. Express and all them companies that have the lease purchase models, they just have different models in it, and their models is set up for the company to be successful and for the lease purchase operator to be successful. So you just got to understand what you're dealing with. Well, you know, you know for, for for drivers that that's coming into leasing or drivers that's you know that say, "Hey, I'm I'm done with the with the company side. Let let me jump on the 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 lease side to try to make more money and maximize my my profitability." But a lot of these drivers I mean, let's be honest. A lot of these drivers that's getting into these company lease purchase uh, programs, 
are drivers that, you know, that, that can't afford to buy a truck or just don't have the credit. I mean, would you agree yeah. with me on that? I, I highly agree because when I came, I didn't have the credit and I couldn't afford a truck, right? And But you got to understand that not only in leasing, there are more advantages just, to, just in the earnings that you make. There's tax advantages, there's write-offs, there's things that you can use. There's building an entity where you can generate revenue, where you can get loans. It's all type of things that you can use as a tool to get to the next level. Even, even though you are hindered by bad credit or a bad past past, you know, and things like that. You know, I wish I could go to Walmart and be, and, and be a company driver and make $110,000. You know what I mean? I can't do that. But I still make that here. And, and but I, a lot of drivers come here and they're just unprepared. Let me tell you a story, man. I'm going to tell you a story. When I started two years ago, I was in Super Ego. I came, when I came to Super Ego, I flew to Super Ego. I had $10,000 in my pocket. How did I get to $10,000? Because I went to TLI for three and a three. It was about three and a half months, and I saved like sixteen thousand dollars just by making eighteen, two thousand stuff like that, right? So I I took half of that to Super Ego, knowing that they had to zero down. At the time, you could get more trucks to zero down. I still had ten thousand because I was ready to get in the business. I know it costs to be the boss, right? So I go down there and I go down there, man, and, and I go through the orientation and I see how they, you know, the organization is. And when me and this other guy got a truck, man, one younger guy, he said he was a, a company driver. He'd been driving over the road. He'd been over the road for a year, man. They ain't been home. And when we got the truck, the guy got a truck and he and he got his truck and he pulled me to the side. He said, hey, bro, let me holler at you. I said, what's up? He said, man, um, can you uh, loan me $20? I said, what you mean? What you need twenty dollars, bro? He said, man, I need twenty dollars to get something. So my 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 thinking is this: if a person can't take care of their own personal lifestyle, what makes you think that you can be successful in being in business? Because right. not only you got to you got to manage I, your personal. I, I, I missed uh I missed the part. I missed the part. You kind of went out for a second, but you you said that the young man asked you for twenty dollars and you. Ask yeah. him why he wanted $20. What, what did he say? No, no, no. I gave him the $20 and I talked to him, you know, and I, and I, I didn't say that to him. I asked him. I asked him about his background. He said he'd been driving a year. I said, brother, if you've been driving a year for a company, bro, why you don't got no money, bro? What, like, what, what have you been doing with your money? You, you live in your truck. And he was like, man, I, I just don't know, man. I just, I don't have money. I'm like, but I just, that just let me look at the mentality of some people who feel they're ready to be a lease purchase operator, owner operator, and they can't even manage their own personal finances. Let me let me you interject know, and, on and, that, man. That, that, and, and that's that's bad business on on the uh on on the driver's part. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna break its back or anything like that because we all have our vices, and <laughs> yeah, you know you 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 coming into a uh you coming into an industry. That's right off the rip that you're going to be making at least on the low end, $800. You know, that's on the low end because when you come in, you got to go through training and all sorts, you know. You, if you're a young man, and this and this is what I say, because like I said, I, I, <laughs> I wish 50-year-old Sean could go back and talk to 20-year-old Sean. You, you, you see what I'm saying? I, I yeah, wish I could right go on. back. I wish I can go back and, 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 and talk to myself and be like, yo, bro, you know, all that money that you was blowing, all that time that you was wasting, all, yeah, you, you, you should have put $10 here, $5 there, $20 here, bro. You just didn't do it because you, you, you thought you was going to be young and you going to party all the time. But when I, you know, but yeah. as a young man getting in this truck, because it's, we, we see him getting younger and younger, you know. Put that coffee down. We see 18 year olds getting their CDLs and all like that. And they over here talking about, oh, well, I'm going to go ahead and live in the truck. I'm going to give everything up and put everything in storage and I'm just going to live in the truck. Yet. Yeah, that's cool and all, 
that's cool and all. But while you in the truck, living in the truck, you got to make sure you stack that money. I mean, if yeah. you're gonna if you're gonna sacrifice your life that way, then you might as well do it for a purpose. And the purpose is that yeah. bank. If that bank ain't looking right, then you need to change. You need to change up. Ain't no way that you should be driving if you don't have no responsibilities. I'm just saying if. If you don't have no responsibilities, no bills, no kids, no, you know, maybe a girlfriend here and there. But if you don't have none of that, then your bank should be on point. Ain't no way that you should be driving for a year and you don't have no money in the bank, bro. Now, my vice is poker. Everybody knows that. Yeah, you know, I I hit the poker tables and I get I I get banked all the time. But I know my vice. You should know yours when somebody come and ask you like, "Bro, why you ain't got no money and you been driving for a year making maybe about 8 900 dollars every week and you don't have no responsibilities and you need to borrow some money?" I don't get that. I don't understand that. And I I see a lot of these drivers that comes on social media faking the funk and then when times get hard, they come back on social media after they just fake the funk talking about they're broke. I need some money. I need bro, what you was what 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 you was doing with your money? You over here talking about you making money? talking about this talking about that but you're gonna come you you coming back now saying that you broke how is that possible especially if you're a young cat an older cat maybe but a young cat i can't see it it and, and that's that's just to correlate with about a week ago um i got a individual that uh, commented on my page said how Sega was a scam and how that he was there. He, now, he was only there a week, right? And he said that uh, in a week, he almost lost everything. So my, my, my thought process is, brother, if you almost lost everything in a week, then you weren't in a good situation financially to even get into entrepreneurship. Because this alone is a gamble. No, no matter where you do, if you get a taco stand, a soap cone stand, Entrepreneurship is a high risk investment. You either can make it or you're not. Uh, and, and and that's just, but the people who make it are people who grind, people who have the grit and things like that. Uh, but one thing I will say, uh, I've been here two years, man, and I've seen this company evolve. Um, it's, it's, it's a lot of things that they're getting better at that they're not, they wasn't great at, that they're getting better at. And they're, they're trying right now. I talked to hundreds. I've talked to probably over thousands of drivers since I've been here. I spend sometimes five, six hours a day talking to drivers, even in, if they're not a referral. Even if a person is, is not a referral of mine, I still invest into them being successful. No matter, because I care about people making it, man. I, I've been there. I've been at the bottom. I know what it is. I know what it is like. So I told myself, if I ever get in position and I ever get at the bag, I'm going to try to help people. Get at the bag too. Now, will everybody get the bag? No, because everybody is not made up like that. Especially people that come to a situation and thinking that just because it's zero down, mean that it it means that it's zero liability. You know, and, and in my videos, I try to break it down the best I can of of the what entails of being here, because you when you first get your truck. You know, you got to know the numbers, right? You can't expect to gross. Any owner operator know if they gross between three to four thousand dollars, that was a bad week. Because before you pay yourself, you got to pay your overhead. That's the cost of doing business. Once you pay your overhead, then you got to start trying to get profit profitability to pay yourself as a driver, then yourself as a company, because you need maintenance and all these things. And you got to think of that, and you got to. You know, man, it's going to be nice. If you, if you think you're going to sleep in the bed back in that bunk, man, just like a company drive with no worries in the world, then you're, you're sadly mistaken. 
because there's not no company in the, in the country that has been successful that didn't grind and lose sleep. The average, the average entrepreneur, man, I'm talking about works 14, 15, 16 hours a day because you got to wear many hats. It's not, a, it's more than just driving the steering wheel, man. If you think you're just going to get in this job and steering wheel and say, hey, uh, you got a load for me, dispatch, and they say, well, we got a load in uh, Washington. Okay, but you as a driver in a company, you got you to look at it and analyze and say, okay, if I go to Washington, what is the odds of me getting out of there and, be, and becoming profitable? I mean, profitable. Should I go to Washington or should I go to Chicago, Illinois? You know, which lane is better for me? Where is the fuel? Where do I fuel up? Just yesterday, um, I just saved $70. Let me show you how easy that you can save money. This can accumulate to more profitable profit at your, on your bottom line. I was just in Alabama, and I seen a, a truck a truck stop. It had fuel for $4.98. So I looked on my Trucker Path app. I just found out that if I drive just 100 miles more, which I have fuel to do, they had fuel for $4. I just saved myself $70 on 100 gallons. I mean, that's more than, that's like $89 on a hundred gallons. And that's the way you got to think to be successful here. Do you, you can't depend. Do you, do you think, do you think new drivers that's, that's coming into the company, um, especially coming from, uh, a company driver, because me, you know, I, I, I got a fuel card. I go up to pilot fuel up. Don't think nothing of it. Top off, hang it up. Don't think nothing of it. But if I was to come over to the controversial company, Super Eagle, my mindset on, on fueling would, would, would definitely have to, have, have, have to change, right? Of course. I mean, without a doubt. And, and I talk about that on my channel. I tell them fuel management plays a close part with you being profitable. That can that can equate to your check being fifteen hundred to twenty four twenty five hundred, you know, and and that plays a great deal. Uh, how you drive the truck, how, what speed you drive the truck at, how does your truck operate, your 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 you know your inflation of, of your tires, you know, to, to get you a better fuel economy, you know, things like that. You got to pay attention to all those things because at the end of the day. This is, what I, this is how I feel about it, man. If I can't pay my bills and I got to call my fiance and say, hey, babe, I can't pay uh, your, you know, the house note, that, that's a lot of weight on me, man. So when I do, when, when, I, when I know I got that type of weight, I, I interact every day like it's my last meal. Because in entrepreneurship, you got to think like that, man. You got to have that go-getter mentality. You know, it's not, it's not everything's not hunky-dory. And, 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 and that's why I leave my number. I start doing all my videos. I leave my number on my videos so people can call me. And I, I tell them, I say, hey, man, if you want to come over here, I put all the numbers on my video. Just run the numbers. See if it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense, then, okay, make, a, make an educated decision. It's not for you. But see if it's making sense. The first thing I ask, ask people now, I say, hey, I ask them about their background, how much experience they have. How are they financially? I ask them, what do you need? Like people call me and say, if I come over there, I'm not going to make money. I said, okay, what is your definition of money? And I, I explained to them that today's prices are not yesterday's prices. You know, uh, just in January, man, I did 4,000 miles and I came home with $6,300. If I do that same 4,000 miles now, I'm probably going to come home with, it depends on my average, because it's the difference. See, a lot of people don't understand. Super Ego has a no-force dispatch policy, right? So that means that you don't have to go nowhere you don't want to. But what people don't understand, that just because you live in the South and you want to be home every weekend, you're going to take a pay cut, because sometimes the lanes in the South are less profitable, and you have to go where the money is. And that's just what it takes to be successful. And a lot of people they don't want to get out of their comfort zone. Now, what about what what about what about that going where the money is? What 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 about that? Let's you know drivers do go where the money is, 
But unfortunately, when they get there, oh. where's my leaf? Mm. They they not getting no money out. So what do you suggest? What do, what do you suggest? Because there's been countless of videos of people, you know, taking taking loads in the in the in the areas they felt that it was money, but then when it was time to come up out of that area, they they felt that they was driving for free. I said that it's an offset because the money that you take going in, let's say three thousand, you know, let's let's just say that on the top end. Um the money coming out, uh, the money coming out will offset with the money coming in that you, that you went in. But that's that's just me thinking off the top of my head. What do you what what do you what do you have to say about that, or what do you suggest? Okay, first off, uh, the freight brokers and, and, and shippers control the rate uh, by the way that uh, carriers uh, bid the rate. Uh, so it's all about supply and demand. Uh, let's use California, for instance. All right, I've been here two years. I've been to California, California once, right? And the only reason I came with to California is that by Thursday, I had a couple mishaps happen to me, and I knew that I had to gross up a certain amount of money in order to make my week successful. So I had $2,500 that week, right? And it was a Thursday. So I told my dispatcher, I, I'd never go to California. I said, look, I need to make like $4,000 so by, 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 you know, Monday, you know, so in order to make $4,000 by Monday here, you just got to pick up a load before Monday. You don't have to deliver it by Monday, but you just got to pick it up before Monday, right? So it goes on that same check. So he found me a load 4,500. It's like 2,000 miles ago to California. Well, at the time, you know, uh, you get less going into California, more coming out. That's, that's not the case right now. If you was to go to the that load board and look at all the loads as a whole, now I'm not talking about if you see one or two loads on the load board and they maybe got high rates because a lot of those brokers don't have a high uh, credit rating. So a lot of carriers don't bro mess with these brokers because they're unreliable. So when you look at the rates, you look at it as a whole. What I do, I do about 10, 15 of them. I do it in my head. I run the numbers. You got a load $2. You got a load $150. You got a load 160 180 170, and you compile them all together and you divide it by the number of the loads that you put in the, in the case. That'll give you an average of pretty much what is the you know, pay rate of coming out of that lane. And usually I do so before I book the load going into that area. I don't wait till I just get to the area. When my dispatcher calls me and say, hey, I want you to go to Wyoming. Well, as soon as he tell me, before he called me, I already did my uh, homework I know where the paying lanes. I know in Wyoming, the truck to load ratio, there's not that many trucks, the loads, but there are more trucks. So therefore, I might get good going in there, but not not good coming out. And you gotta be gotta be on top of your, 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 your craft, man. You gotta be on top of it. And you know, like people was saying that super ego um lead left them stranded here and they turned off their fuel cart. Well, what happens is with Super Ego, they they give you a fuel card. They're not understanding. As a contractor, a carrier is not obligated to supply fuel for you. That's kind of like if you was a carpenter and you showed up to my house to do my uh my, uh so to do my walls and things, and you showed up and stopped on my door and said, "Hey, excuse me, sir. Uh, I know you uh, hired me as a carpenter, but uh, can you do you have any extra nails?" So that. Fuel card is like a bonus, right? A bonus. So when you use that fuel card, they give you the fuel card so you can use, you can get from point A to point B loaded. The reason why they only let you, and this is my, you know, point of view. The reason why they only let you use the fuel card when it's loaded because they can realize their investment. If the fuel card was on when you were, say, for instance, you was in California or you was in New York. And you couldn't find a load and you were frustrated, right? So I can't find a load. I don't want to leave. I'm going home. Why should a company have to pay for you deadheading five to 700 miles 
when they can't realize the money they invest. And a lot of people, they own such of a subjective mindset instead of being objective and thinking of it, think it look at it at, in a business aspect. You know, I'm not going to give you money so you can just deadhead. Why don't you take that load that, that is less paying that would pay you at least the fuel and you can make some money. Now, you're not going to be profitable as you was going in there. But you should have did the due diligence to understand what you were dealing with. You know, one guy told me, he came over here, and he told me, he's like, yeah, man, I didn't have a good week. Uh, I only made 4000 this week. I said, okay, look, first off, send me your statement. I, I want to analyze your statement and see what's going on. The first time, you know, when somebody sent me a statement, I look at their numbers. I see what they're spending on fuel. I look at their mileage and see what they're getting rate per mile. And I analyze this and give them my best, uh, you know, come up with a best solution so, so they can be profitable. Well, the guy uh, took a load to Florida, right? And not saying that you can't be profitable running Florida, but it has to be a strategy to it. You know, you can't just go into Florida because nine times out of ten, when you're in drive van, you're going to have to either come out of Florida either empty, you're going to get 80 cents, you might get lucky, to get two dollars a mile if you lucky lucky and that's like shooting the dice but so but if it's an educated move now say for i tell people that say for somebody's coming they lease they live in florida and they want to be a lease operator i say look this is how you run that lane when you come out on a monday you got to take the first thing smoking to come out of there right you take the first thing smoking i don't care what it is all you dead head you wake up early that morning four or five that morning two that morning you get up out of there so you be in position on Tuesday to start making money. Or you just take a load just to pay for fuel to get up out of it. And once you do so, then you get to the Midwest, right? You get to the Midwest, you run lateral to 80, lateral, go all the way to Pennsylvania, go to no farther than Minnesota if you want to go up in Seattle. Then on Friday, you take a load back to Florida. And you know going back to Florida, you're going to make premium dollars. So you try to accumulate your gross Monday through Friday. So you got four days, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Friday. You gross, say for instance, you gross 4800 On Friday, if you can get 3500 going into Florida, you have had almost an $8,000 week. That alone is going to bring you over $3,000. Now, it might can bring you four if you save money on fuel and, and things like that, and you just kept your foot off the uh, pedal. But I try to educate people, man, because you got to study and know what you're doing. They got companies out there that you can go to lease to lease with that micromanage, right? But the only thing about those companies, your profit margin is going to be a lot less. I know a, I knew an individual when I first started. When one thing that motivated me when I first started within my first year, I met an individual out of Miami that paid his three and a half year uh, lease off in two years. That was motivation for me. You know, because you, you can do that here. All you just right. have to save your money. All right. Cooking in the hammer lane, putting it down for us, man. Woo. I, you know, I, I, I sat here. I sat here for this little bit of time and learned more, learned, learned more in 30 minutes than I learned in all years about a uh, controversial company, Super Ego, man. Thank you very much. Really do appreciate you coming on, bro. And, uh, Sharing your experience and uh and 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 breaking it down for us. Yeah. So so once again, if anybody have any of the information and, and you know if want to have more information, all they got to do is look on my channel. They can call me and we can just go to it because let me tell you something. The company right now is is focusing on building driver relations. They understand that in the you know they they see what's going on. And they're really trying, and I'm telling you this, and, I'm, and not on the behalf of the company, but on the behalf of the driver. They're actually trying to be in touch with the driver. They're trying to build relationships with the drivers because people don't understand. A lot of people think Super Ego makes money by drivers coming in two, three weeks. No, they make money by drivers being sustainable. Super Ego has almost tripled in size since I've been here. And, and you think that happened by them repoing trucks every two, three days or every two, three weeks? No. Companies don't survive that way. So they are focusing right now on, on uh, they're trying to focus more on the drivers because the drivers are important to the viability of any business. What can I get you? 
I'd like a large coffee. Okay, so hot coffee. Hot coffee. Okay, room for cream. Totally leave room for cream. Why are you talking like that? Why are you talking like that? Because this is my voice. This is my voice. And people just have to be patient. They're trying. They're trying to get contract break. It's a lot of things going on behind the scenes. And and you know every company start off a certain way. And I, I I'm not. So I'm happy with how they start off because I had I had a great year and a half, first year and a half, you know. And uh, you know, I'm still here. Now, trust me, if the money wasn't here, I'd have been gone, you know. And right. I and I understand, and I'm staying here because I'm 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 going through this. You know, every truck driver tell you this is a cycle, and it's getting better. Uh, just alone in the last two weeks, just the fuel price dropping about two dollars, two dollars and fifty cents has put seven to eight hundred dollars in my pocket a week. That's a substantial amount. Substantial. All right. You know, and, and people got to understand that. All right. Cooking in the hammer lane. Uh, how, how, how would, uh, if you know, I, I would honestly, you know, I, I will honestly say that you, you, uh, you, you definitely got some good points. Uh, very, very, very knowledgeable of, of what's going on over there. So, uh, how would the people that's interested or more interested in controversial Super Eagle, how would they get in contact with you? Well, first off, uh, I have a, a, a YouTube channel, Cooking in the Hammer Lane. They can Google it. Um, or you can reach me at 346-232-2906. When you call me, I, I talk on the behalf of the driver. Um I, I'm on. I, I try to speak the best interest for the driver. See if this is the best fit for you. I'm not a recruiter. I'm not just trying to fill seats. I really want drivers to be successful. And what success is to that driver, it's all on that driver. They have to paint the picture of what success is for them. Some people want the truck. Some people want the money. You know, and, and, and it's like you got to realize that. And I help people realize that I've been doing it. A lot of people talk about what I've been doing, but they have been some successful people here. Since I've been here and I help, I have, I, you know, I had people come here and leave Super Ego and go to another company and turn around and come right back. So if it was that bad, why would they come back? Why? Mm. So All right, that's I help up, people man. realize that. So All right. I really appreciate you uh, putting me on your channel. Uh, you know, let me be on your channel uh, because, like you say, everybody has their point of view uh, and just, you know, it's all about your perception. So. Hey, I I appreciate you uh coming on here, bro. Big G's got it locked, boy. Want you to love me all night, yeah, take me down. Want you to make me real wet, yeah, swim around. Want you to take it like a G, you know what I mean?